Hello, I am Will Keith, and today I am bringing you a tips and tricks video to give you a little bit of an advantage in the sometimes punishing world of Skyrim. I am playing on Master Difficulty, so obviously all of these tips will apply to lower difficulties if they work on the hardest one. So, the first thing I want to show you is a way for warriors to easily heal while especially while fighting dragons when they take off to the sky and are flying around acting like general dragonish jackasses I'm going to load a save here where I'm almost dead and show you this trick alright now what I'm going to do is first watch what happens when I just hold both things completely out of magicka and not even fully healed. Now, watch this other method that works very well. Full heal and what well, almost full heal basically and not even lost half my magicka. Now why this works is when you begin healing for about one second it heals about twice as fast as it would if you continue holding it down. I'm not sure if this is a glitch or if this is just there is like a feature for smart people to figure out but it works. Also if you begin raising one hand while the other is still up, you'll get a dual cast bonus bonus for um about one second. Like watch how I begin raising one hand before I take the other down. You don't see the you don't see the dual cast ball come up, but it does work for about one second and gives you quick healing without losing too much magicka. Now what you want for this is, even as a warrior, this video is not for crazy role players who, absolute, who absolutely refuse to use m magic or archery for some kind of weird role play. If you're like that, then this video isn't for you. This is for people who will use what they have at their disposal. What you want is, you want novice restoration and dual casting. There's only two perks, none of them are like five level things, and they are much more useful than any other two perks you could possibly take. I absolutely recommend you pick them up for any kind of character you're playing. This method is the most valuable thing you can possibly know in this game to heal yourself. Now, a another cool, not really a trick, but um, a cool method that I know during combat. Where my companion get off to? Ah, there he is. Now, you're going to want this perk in the block tree. Time slows down if you are blocking during an enemy's power attack. Quick reflexes. You want this as soon as you can get it. Now, if you already have this, what you most likely do is... Let me piss off my companion here. Alright, now... What you most likely do is shield bash during an enemy's power attack to get him off. However, that wastes stamina that doesn't need to be wasted when wait, watch. You can e wait. You can easily release the shield, step back. Or even jump back to gain some extra speed. Also, if he does an overhead attack where he brings it above his head and attacks downward, if you're fast enough, you can totally sidestep. Backing up, an enemy with a shield will likely raise the shield before you can go back in for another attack. However, if you sidestep and you're still close in, you can get attacks in before you can raise the shield. Alright, 
another cool trick I know is, hang on, let me heal up. Alright, another cool trick I know is the clear skies, wait, where is it? The clear sky shout is actually useful in combat. Lots of people would even think about it just because of what it's named, but... Watch. Hang on, it's not working. <laughs> hang on. What the F? There we go. That's just a glitch where sometimes dragon challenge won't work, but see? It staggers the enemy just as well as a level 1 or 2 first push or unrelenting first sword. It's a very good way to stagger the enemy, attack, and run out. Only use the level 1 because level 3 of the shout just wastes time and does the same effect. Watch. So he doesn't get, I think he might have a little bit more stagger but not much. And a level 1 clear skies only takes about 6 seconds to recharge. It is absolutely valuable in combat. And is not to be overlooked. I haven't tested it on large enemies like giants or dragons. But I'm going to go test it on a dragon right now. So, wait. No, I'm going to go test on a giant. I can't really just get a dragon. Alright, let me go find a giant. to a giant somewhere right. I don't know if I've cleared out this camp yet if not though Are we uploading? All right, there we go. Ah, uh, yay! Did not kill the giant. All right, so testing what clear skies is going to do to a giant. It does stagger him. Also, the block and avoid secret doesn't really work for giants, at least not that I know of. The attacks have an AoE. I mean, if you're really fast, it might work, but it's much better just shield dashing to be safe. So with clear skies, shield bash, and um, slow time while blocking, quick reflexes, I think it's called. Giants shouldn't be able to stand up to you. I mean, I'm a high level, so they can't stand up to me anyway, but, um... I was killing giants when I was, like, level 15, using these same methods. Alright, what else to show you? Ooh. Whoops. Damn it. Hang on. I'll get this. Alright, I give up. I'll deal with this later on. Alright, another good trick is... Oh, another trick is to avoid these bitches completely. They'll kill you instantly. Especially if you're a pure warrior. 
All right, now what this chick is, is that horses are frigging Spider-Man in this game. If you're trying to get up a mountain face that you can't get up with just your character, get on your horse, take it around the universe, and all the other places too. I think you'll find that the universe pretty much covers everything. Shut up, woman, get on my horse. All right, viewers completely ignore all of that. But anyway, by pressing up against a rock face at a decently slight angle, you can basically spam jump when on a horse to climb very, very steep walls. It won't climb up a absolute straight wall, but even a very slightly slanted one. By jumping up, you can get up most anything. I got to the top of the throat of the world before I was supposed to in the main quest, but I'm not going to go up there now to avoid any possible spoilers. Oh, also your horse gets magic and floats if you try to try to do this too much. He will, he will Sometimes he'll be floating for like a good 30 seconds, but I promise you he will land eventually, so don't think you're glitched and just go reload a save. Okay, now a another very, very, very important tip that almost completely destroyed this character. You gotta watch out for this glitch. The, um... The Dragon Shout Elemental Fury. Do not use this shout. Like, at all costs, do not use this shout. Basically, like, technically what it does is it spawns a separate invisible weapon in your hand. Or maybe it just, like, creates a whole new one with the same mesh and texture and look as the weapon you currently have just with the wind. So what it does is it adds a new weapon into either one or both of your hands when you use the shout. And what happens is sometimes when those weapons despawns, it doesn't actually despawn. It just stays there forever, making that horrible, incessant, unbearable whooshing sound that the Dragon Shout makes. I, I lost over three hours of game time because I got this glitch, and I kept playing thinking that it would go away, but it didn't, and I had to reload a really old save. I, I couldn't deal with the sound, it's horrible. So, no matter what, completely avoid the Elemental Fury Shout until they either release a patch to fix it, or if you have a PC until they release a mod to fix it. Alright, um, what else can I show ya? Um, oh yeah, don't underestimate the ability of companions or summons and whatnot. Companions, all you can do is, let me wait for my companion to show up. Let me wait for my companion to show up. Okay, he's not showing up. Um, lost him somewhere. But either way, the point is, is that companions are friggin' tanks. If you have a room in front of you where there's something that keeps on killing you and you just rush in, talk to your companion, say, I need you to do something, and just click on him to go into that room. The enemy will get pissed off at the companion before you, and then you can just run in and beat the hell out of the enemy while the badass companion tanks said enemy for you. They are extremely useful. However, I do not recommend giving them your stuff. You got you, you, you can treat your companions like they're people, man. Don't don't be mean to the companions. I mean, I'm beating on them during this video just for like demonstration purposes, but when you're actually playing the game, be nice to them because they will save your ass so much. Don't give them too much to carry, because if you do end up losing them, then you lose your stuff. Give them good armor, a good weapon. Like, my companion has exactly what I have, noth nothing else. He's as much as a badass as my character is, and he is extremely useful in all combat situations. Alright, um... Anything else? Ooh, there's an enemy there. Oh, hey, I think that's my companion. Hello there. Alright, see... You can talk to him. I need you to do something. What is it? And then you can it will be done. click anywhere and he will. And he will. It will be done. Alright, it seems my companion is just extremely glitched. It will be done. And I was going that way. And I was going this way. Alright, good Khajiit. So anyway, that usually works. And definitely send them in before you go in. 
any place where you are questionable about you might die. So definitely use them to tank for you if you're not confident that you'll be able to take something down. Especially if you're a warrior spell casting enemies or things like Spriggans which just deal extreme I, I don't want to say nature damage, but that seems what it is. My um elemental protection perk doesn't really seem to help against Spriggans and I'm not sure why. Also one more tip I guess I can give you is that when fighting mages like necromancers or um basically any kind of mage, don't bother trying to cast spells or dragon shouts at them because they will likely be using they will likely be using this world spell. Now what this does is it protects you from magic damage and I can almost guarantee that as a warrior their, their magical protection is going to be stronger than any kind of magical damage you can dish out. This counts for spells as well as shouts any shouts, not just damage shouts. So what you want to do when facing mage enemies, especially if you um see that they're using the protection world is Head. see Head on. I pretend as though my he he I just Are you gonna stay there? Okay. You want to use Whirlwind Sprint. Say that is a magical enemy that's a mage and he's blocking all my spells. You want to hide behind. You want to hide behind something. Wait till after he casts a spell so he's got to recharge. Step out. Go launch yourself in. And immediately. Yeah, 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 that's me. What the F? I had something going on. But anyway, Warren sprint into magical enemies and immediately shield bash them. That's a melee attack. They cannot defend against that with their magic world thing. So go in, shield bash them, and continue mauling them with your weapon until they go down. Who is he attacking? Oh my god, an actual thief? That's new to me. I thought they were talking to me when they said stop thief. The F? Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, now for my final trick, I'm going to show you how to correctly use the... Oh, I got a level. Alright, I'll save that perk for later. I'm going to show you how to correctly use the or sprinting attack. Lots of people I've seen, they either get in too close. See, like, watch what's going to happen here. I'm going to knock him to the ground using unrelated force. I'm going to run in and try to use the sprinting attack. I'm going to go flying right over him. See, watch. Alright, he was already standing up by the time I attacked, which is why I didn't go over him. But usually... If he's lying completely on the ground and hasn't started to stand up yet, you'll go flying right over him. If you've used this perk, you almost definitely know what I mean. Also, when you're using it, if you're even a little bit off, you will go flying right past him. And you miss like that. What you want to do is you need to keep the camera straight on him. Don't, like, start running this way, come in, and just try to move it on there. You want a direct line of sight like you're about to fire an arrow. Run in, and when you're about this far away from him, is when you hold the trigger. If you're too close, you might lose you might lose your target and go sideways. If you're too far back, you won't land the attack. Right about here is where you want to go in, maybe about 10 feet away. Get up a good line of sight. Run in and perfect it is a powerful attack if it works and um definitely useful